This lesson deals with source transformations. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 3 starting on page 34. Since a Thevenin equivalent circuit and a Norton equivalent circuit can both represent the same circuit, is there some relationship between them? The answer is yes, and it's called the source transformation property. Let me express it as a schematic. Given a voltage source in series with a resistance, you can replace that by a current source in parallel with the resistance to create the same effect at nodes A and B if you pick this resistor to be equal to this one, and if you pick the current source to be this voltage divided by this resistance. I can also go the other way. You can take a current source in parallel with the resistance and express that as a voltage source in series with the resistance if you pick the resistor here to be the same as this one and pick the voltage here to be the product of the current times the resistance. So it goes in both directions. Now why is this true? In the proof of Thevenin and Norton's theorem, the circuit that was used to calculate R Thevenin and R Norton was the same, so they are equal to each other. Now let's take the Thevenin equivalent circuit, which is just a voltage source in series with a resistance, and let's write that circuit in terms of its output, the voltage and the current, and allow all possible values of voltage and current. The rise in voltage would be V Thevenin, the drop would be I times R Thevenin, plus the voltage V. Let's solve for V. Put this on the other side of the equation as a minus I R Thevenin plus V Thevenin, and then solve for I. Bring this on this side of the equation with a minus sign, put this over here with a plus sign, and divide by R Thevenin. Now I have the Y axis of this graph versus the X axis, if I just kind of clean this up a little bit. This is equal to minus V times 1 over R Thevenin plus V Thevenin over R Thevenin. That's the equation of a straight line. Let's find the intercepts. When the voltage is equal to zero, the current is equal to V Thevenin over R Thevenin. That's this red dot over here. Let's go back to this equation. When the current is equal to zero, the voltage V is equal to V Thevenin. That would be the second point. All possible answers of V and I that are here fall on this straight line. Let's do the same for the Norton equivalent circuit. Let's solve for V and I in terms of the current source and the resistor. The current I sub n is entering the node. What's leaving the node is this current, which is V divided by R sub n plus I. Solve for I. So I is equal to I Norton minus V over R Norton. And that's the equation of the straight line where I is the Y axis and V is the X axis. Find the intercepts. When V is equal to zero, I is equal to I Norton. That's this point right here. And when I is equal to zero, here, V is equal to R Norton times I Norton. For these two circuits to be equivalent, we're going to set this equal to the y-axis intercept in our previous calculation and do the same thing here for the x-intercept. So let's go back and look what those would need to be. Those are going to be equivalent to each other. I'd have to pick I Norton to equal V Thevenin over R Thevenin and V Thevenin equal to I Norton times R Norton. That's written on the bottom of the page here. But those two equations are actually the same thing. Of course, we're on a straight line with the same slope, so that would make sense. It just shows us then that we're going to pick the Norton current by taking the voltage of our voltage source and dividing it by the Thevenin resistance. Or we'll calculate the Thevenin voltage as the Norton current times the Norton resistance. Now we can find R Thevenin, which is equal to R Norton, by doing series and parallel combinations. Or we can apply a test voltage, measure a test current, and their ratio would be the value of R Norton or R Thevenin. Now this may be tedious, and so here's another idea, just using these equations that are right here. Let's solve for R Thevenin. R Thevenin from here is equal to V Thevenin over I Norton. That's the same as true right over here. V Thevenin divided by I Norton is equal to R Norton, which is R Thevenin. You could find the Norton resistance, which is equal to the Thevenin resistance, by taking the ratio of the open circuit voltage to the short circuit current. Sometimes this is easier to do because we are opening and shorting things. Now source transformations are a very powerful analysis technique that allows us to take a large problem and reduce it to a much smaller one. Let me do an example. Suppose I have a voltage source, two current sources, and five resistors. Let's find the power absorbed by this six volt battery, which means I gotta find the current in that direction, by using source transformations. So I don't really care what the rest of the circuit's doing, I just wanna solve for a specific current. So I can reduce all of this to a much simpler circuit by using transformations. Let's see how we're gonna do that. Things in parallel can be put in any order. So let me put these two current sources together. Let me flip the direction of this one to be pointing up. I would do that by changing the sign on it. What's entering this node is 12 milliamps plus a minus four milliamps. Eight milliamps is leaving. And of course, eight milliamps is entering. 
What's coming in here is minus 4 plus 12. You could replace all of this by one current source that creates the same effect. And that's what I've shown here. Right now let's do a source transformation with this current and resistance. Also note that the original nodes in the problem are A, B, C, D, and E. Let's see what happens to those as we do transformations. To convert this into a voltage source in series with a resistance, I'm going to take the same resistor, 4K, and put it in series with a voltage source whose value is 8 milliamps times 4K. And that's 32 volts, the K and the milli cancel. Now what's happened is we've actually created a new node in our problem. I'm not going to label it with a letter, but just simply note that that is something that wasn't there originally. What I'm creating is an effect that's the same between C and D. That's what I can do if all I care about is this current. I've got these four elements in series, and you can put things in series in any order because we're adding up voltages when we're calculating the drops across each element. Let me rearrange the order of the elements. Move the 10K up here where the 4K is. And now I can combine all of these into one resistor whose value is 10K plus 4K plus 6K. In the process, I lose nodes C and D. Now let's do a source transformation so I can then eventually combine these two resistors together. They're not in series or in parallel right now, but with a source transformation, I can actually do that, just like I did in this last case. Convert this into a current source, parallel with a resistance. The arrowhead points where the plus sign was. Current source is going to be 32 volts divided by 20K. It'll be 1.6 milliamps in parallel with 20K. Now I have these two resistors in parallel. I can combine them, take the product over the sum, and that turns out to be 12K. I can replace that with the 12K resistor in parallel with the 1.6 milliamps. Doing a source transformation again, I can put this resistor in series with this one. So let's take a look at that. Multiplying the 12K times the 1.6 milliamps, Ks and milli cancel, and I get 19.2 volts. That's now in series with 12K, creating the same effect between nodes B and E, creating a new node, but that's okay. So all I care about is this current. So this has an equivalent circuit to our previous ones. And now I can combine these two resistors in series. I get 16K. And now I can solve for the current in this direction. That would be a drop across here in this direction. If I think of this as a common node or a ground, then this node voltage is 19.2. This is 6 volts, so I take the difference of those two and divide by 16K. And I get 825 microamps. The current flowing into this plus terminal, so the power absorbed by the 6-volt battery is the product of 6 volts and 825 microamps, and that's 4.95 milliwatts. And this is source transformations and an example illustrating it.